Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world today. Welcome to our March Power Panel. Uh, before we get started, I want to make sure that um, we kind of get a heads up where you guys are in the world today. So using that questions box on your dashboard, let's do a little state shout out. Uh, where are you dialing in from? Are you in Texas? I don't know, California, Michigan? I myself, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of sunshine peak out today after about seven straight days of rain. So would love to know where you all are dialing in from. All right, I'm gonna check on here for this questions box. We have Central Florida, welcome. Indiana, I see you. Pennsylvania, Texas, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. That's actually where my daughter lives. So welcome, welcome. Uh, we have a bunch of Floridas, Raleigh, North Carolina, Suwannee. Hey, Jamie, I see you. Tallahassee, Texas is representing. We see some Virginia. Wow, you guys are all over the place. I don't see any West Coasters yet. Anybody on the West Coast dialing in? I know it might be a little too early for you, but uh, hopefully we have some West Coast representation out there. Virginia, you guys are coming on strong. I see that a bunch of times. All right, so everyone is starting to log in. Arizona, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am um, sitting in for Melissa DeSico. You all, if you've been on these power panels with her before, um, you know that she typically leads our power panels. Well, Melissa is um, at a client meeting. They're doing their all hands meeting, you know, how you get together in one big group. So she's up in DC right now with their client meeting. We miss her, uh, but hopefully, I can be just as helpful as she has been on these past power panels. So what we're talking about this time around is the new definition of value. And I'm going to give you a little history as to how your renters have gotten to really redefine value for the year 2022. Um, for those of you that maybe have not been on these webinars with me before, my name is Leah Nicole Smith. I'm the Senior VP of Education and Performance for Apartment Ratings and Satisfacts. And here's a quick rundown of what we're gonna do. We've allotted 60 minutes. We may not take up the whole 60 minutes, but we often pad in time for Q&A. So we definitely want you to ask our panel panelists questions. Um, we'll address those at the end of the session. We're going to be recording this session. You will get the recording. You'll also get the slides, which I think is going to be super helpful um, to reference going forward in our follow-up email. Would love for you to participate in our exit survey. It's just two questions. And we do these every month, the third Thursday of the month. So would love for you to continue to sign up. And we are doing a $50 Starbucks gift card giveaway. So I'm gonna give you the instructions for the contest rules as we start to wrap up. And I am so happy to have three very seasoned, very experienced panelists join me today. I'm gonna introduce them one by one and give them an opportunity to say hello to the group. So up first is Cheryl Carroll. Cheryl, would you like to say good morning or good afternoon? Yes. Um, I guess good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm in Florida. I'm really excited to be with everyone today and share some of our uh, tips. And um, yeah, just looking forward to it. Yes. So Cheryl is a regional asset manager with Hankin Apartments, and she oversees a community called the Flats at Tioga Town Center. And just wait until you all see what they've done uh, in terms of perception of value across all of the surveys that were completed for their community uh, over 2021. So super happy to have you. And uh, Cheryl, I have Becky who is chiming in. She says, hey, Cheryl, it's Becky and Tally. So you got, you got a friend on the call today. Hi, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 
All right, we have Linda Graham. She is up next. Linda is a property manager with Kirkway Apartments, uh, managed by Lombardo. Uh, Linda, why don't you say hello and tell everyone where you're located? Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am here in beautiful Michigan and very happy to be a part of today's panel. Excited to hear um, from the other two panelists and the different things that they've um, that they've done and just excited to learn a few things too. Absolutely. And you know, when we were putting together this panelist and I was trying to think of the companies that really, you know, are focusing on those value drivers because they're very different from year to year. Um, Lombardo actually came to mind. I can't believe we we haven't had a representative from Lombardo on one of our power panels because again, you all are doing amazing in terms of those value drivers and everyone who's on the call, you'll be able to see again, their 2020 results um, and how they are really driving value, how Linda and her group are really driving value at Kirkway. And last but not least, I have Samir. And Samir, I might not say your last name properly. So <laughs> I will let you say it and introduce the uh, introduce yourself to the group. Hi, I'm Samir Shantaram. I'm currently at our corporate office as an analyst, but I've been on site for the past eight years. And from what I understand, we do well in the Satisfax survey. So hopefully, can give a tip or two out to everybody yes and so samir was actually um over um, a community called uh, the madison at boston uh with paradigm for much of 2021 pretty much all of 2021 so their results really do speak to how he was leading his team um, and i think it's fantastic that you were promoted um within your company and you're now treasury management analyst who better to talk about value and how you drive value um, across the board for your residents. So welcome to all of our power panel uh, panel participants. Um, and those of you who are participating in the audience, if you have any questions as we're going through uh, the information, like I said, um, please feel free to use that questions box as we are digging on in here. So a little history, um, if you are a Satisfax client and you participated in any of our performance reviews, whether that's for an insight survey or an annual survey, this chart is gonna look very familiar to you. For those of you, this is your first time kind of looking at this chart. Here's how we've kind of, you know, developed this over time. Initially, back in 2013, we gave Ball State University 1.6 million survey responses, and we asked them to determine just one question for us. You know, take all of this data and let us know how do we help our clients drive value. Now, value is very subjective. Um, everyone has a different threshold for when something becomes too expensive or no longer worth it. Um, it's, it's really the reason why, you know, some of us drive Hondas and some of us will drive a Lamborghini. You know, it's just what do you find value in? So Ball State came back and they gave us the initial top five drivers. And this is an order of importance for value. Back in 2013, we saw things like the quality of maintenance, um, the office, are you being responsive and dependable? You know, kind of the nuts and bolts of property management. Over time, certain things start to fall out of the top five. When they fall out of the top five, it's not because residents don't find value in them. Uh, it's because residents kind of chalk it up to that's your job. So as a professionally managed apartment community, you're supposed to have great maintenance. You're supposed to be responsive and dependable. You know, um, you're supposed to even have a good handle on things like safety and security. So if I'm asked as a resident to rate maintenance or to rate the office, I'll gladly give five stars in this area. But if you want me to pay more, you know, if you want me to stay and accept a rental increase, those are just aren't the things that I find value in. Uh, 
So we've been surprised over the years as certain items kind of fall out, pop in, um, rise up in importance, things like that. So where we are right now is looking at what your residents find value in for 2022. And I will say, when we are looking at the value drivers from 2021, there are two brand new drivers that have come into the top five, which means two of the drivers for 2021 have fallen out of the top five, because you lose something, you gain something. And so I'm going to kind of try to put into perspective or tell a little story around why those two items have fallen out of the top five and why um, we have two that are brand new in the top five. So I want to, um, again, just give you a little bit of context as to why we do this every year. The current Satisfax index for those who say they are very likely to renew is at 36%. And to be perfectly honest, I'll take that all day, every day. One out of three residents feel very firm in their renewal decision. But the other 64%, we asked them a follow-up question. Why didn't you answer very likely to renew? Here's the top 10 for 2021. So the 10 most chosen answers for 2021. Now, residents have about 34 options that they could pick from, and we tally them up from most selected all the way down to the least selected. One of the options that we gave them is can't afford. Can't afford number 19 out of the 34 options. So when you have such a large gap between rental increase being number one and can't afford being number two or number 19, we know it's a perception of value issue. Rents are going up, but your residents can't afford it. All you have to do is focus on the things that they find value in. And if those five things are going really well, residents tend to talk themselves out of their own price objection. They may not like it that the rent's going up, but if they can afford it and they find that there's value around that rental increase, you have a better chance of renewing them for another year. So looking at where we are, I'm going to launch a poll and I want to know from the group, it's going to pop up right on your screen. Just click right on the screen, yes or no, if you think sense of community is still the number one driver for perception of value. We got 28% voting. Man, these votes are coming in. We're already up to 50%. Do you think sense of community is still the number one driver for 2022? Just click right on the screen. I'm gonna wait, there might be some debating going on out there. You might be flipping a coin if you vote like I do. All right, we're at 66%. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this poll. I'm gonna give you one last chance to jump in. Okay, let's close this out. So we have right now among the group, 48% say yes, it's still the number one driver. 52% say no. So let's see who is correct. If you answered yes, you are in that 48% and you are absolutely correct. We have again been doing this survey since 2013, as you saw with that major table, and every single year, sense of community has been the number one driver. So this brings me to our panelists. Um, Linda, I think this initial question is for you, and then we'll follow up with Carol and Samir. Uh, we know, again, number one driver, national average is a 3.89, your score for 2021, 4.54 at the exceptional level. That is amazing. So can you share just a couple of things um, that your team has done really to make Kirkway feel like home for the residents? Sure. So I think it really starts from the very first call or visit to the community. Um, and um, exchanging with them, you know, the um, features and amenities that we have, how they come into play, what's most important 
presented them and kind of create this picture of them enjoying those same features and amenities. Um, the way we're positioned within the community, there's a lot of activity back and forth through the clubhouse and they see, you know, existing and current residents um, making use of those and they get excited about being there. Uh, we always refer to ourselves as a neighborhood from the very, very beginning. And um, you know, we spend a lot of time familiarizing them, um, even during their first, you know, tour or even a return visit. We include them um, on our email list for any events, resident events that we're having so that even before they become a resident or if they're still considering that, they come to those, they get to interact with all of our other residents in the neighborhood. And then we, when we set up their move-in appointment, we set aside specific time for them. And again, where they get to interact with everybody in on our team, including the maintenance guys um, who are fabulous and um, welcome them with warm cookies for every move in and follow up with them, you know, shortly after within a week or so just to see how everything's going. Um, and it makes them feel welcome. You can't help but feel welcome. And I think the fact that they are interacting with all of us um, and with all of their neighbors right away, it gives them that uh, sense of inclusiveness and um, and the sense of community as well. I love that. And I was taking notes while you were talking. And one of the things that I wrote down was neighborhood. Using mm -hmm. that term as opposed to complex or even community, because we do mm -hmm. kind of feel like community is it is a very, you know, soft word. It's, um, you know, one of those things. It's not it's way better than complex or property. So we'll take mm -hmm. that any day. But I think neighborhood is kind of next level. So I, I love that. Thank you so much for that. Um, Carol, sure. we'll come to you. Um, I know that your community, the flats at Tioga, your neighborhood, I need to start saying that. <laughs> your, uh, the flats at Tioga, um, you all have a really solid, uh, well above the national average score for sense of community as well. Uh, any tips you can share with, with the audience? Yeah, so, you know, just like everyone, we um, always make sure that we have a monthly calendar of events. Um, I think just even coming off of COVID, everyone is really wanting to get together uh, in person. And we, uh, we, we added a phase two to our project. So we've got a lot of new residents that want to meet their neighbors. And so just having those happy hours, we have yappy hours for the furry friends, concerts and movie nights. And we, you know, we have the benefit of um, being situated in our town center. So um, thankfully we get to also benefit from those larger events, farmer's markets. Um, we've got an art fair. Uh, we have uh, annual holiday tree lighting events. So I think even just that and bringing our community together um, really kind of makes it feel very homey for them. Um, we also just have, you know, a complimentary coffee bar and a book exchange club. So that brings that brings them together in our clubhouse where they get to meet new uh, neighbors and they foster those, you know, long-term relationships, which I think is also important. Um, you know, and then also just making sure we communicate with our residents. Um, we use social media a lot, um, you know, and then of course, text messaging, we have bulletin boards where they can um, uh, communicate through their portal, their online portal. So they're able to ask other neighbors questions or if they're looking for a babysitter or a pet sitter, if they have items to sell. So it's just another way uh, of, for them to be able to reach out to um, communicate with their fellow neighbors. You know, I love that you included communication as a building block to sense of community because that really is part of it. Um, you know, when we do these analysis, you know, yes, you look at events, you look at neighbors, those kinds of things are asked separately on our survey because they will enhance 
sense of community, you know, they just make it even better. So adding those things in just add an, adds another layer to bringing residents together, to making sure they know who lives next door to them and, you know, have some kind of familial, you know, connection with those that live next door to them. But then adding on top of that an opportunity to have that kind of two-way communication. Um, I, I love that you put that in, you know, your you threw that out there as a tip for the group because uh, there's so many little elements that add up to feeling like we truly live at a community as opposed to, you know, this is just an apartment. Um, so I, I'm getting neighborhood from Linda. I'm getting communication from Carol. Samir, you're up next. Uh, what, what do you have for our group? So part of our situation was something exacerbated by, well, the way the COVID hit, it was uh, tough. Everybody separated out, but the way our building was set up was it made a nice little community because it was two buildings facing each other with a small little park in the middle. So we had an outdoor space that people could safely distance themselves and congregate in. And what we started doing when we did cancel a lot of our monthly resident events, we did start in with some food trucks. Like every Tuesday and Thursday, we'd reach out. We had scheduled out months of, in advance at that point for a food truck to come because they weren't making that much money in some of the office parks. A lot of people were from home. So it was great for them. It was great for our residents to be able to come out and, you know, on Tuesday and Thursday evening, not worry about dinner because they've been home all day already working from home. So that was kind of nice little respite for them. And people would see each other outside waiting for the truck waiting for food so they got to see their neighbors a bit more which is nice and then um we kept up with our fitness classes but we moved them from our gym out to our little park and we pay a, a local uh, uh gym i guess or fitness center i guess to come out and actually you know teach free classes we cover that and then the residents can just sign up and show up and they they get to stay active because again mass majority of our residents are home working throughout the day and i think one of the last little initiatives that we did uh last year early last year was uh we started a, a we signed up with an app called kobu c-o-b-u which essentially was was like a facebook for uh multifamily communities and so people could get on there uh talk to their fellow neighbors they would form groups like you know video game playing book club wine club etc but then we we could monitor it, make sure everything was, you know, going well, no, no no issues there. But they would talk amongst themselves. They didn't have to essentially uh, feel like they had to go through the office every time. And the the adoption rate was pretty impressive. I mean, we started getting uh, I think it was like 10, 20 percent pretty quickly. And by the time I left, I want to say we had over 200 some people on that app. You know, making clubs, talking to each other, having you know a couch to sell, this that, and the other. And so we fostered that sense of community within the residents themselves without having to play big brother to them. So I think that helped a lot. Okay, so what I'm getting from you, um, Kathy is asking, can you say the name of that app again that you all were using? Sure, Kobu, C is in Charlie, O is in Oscar, B is in boy, U is in underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, C-O-B-U. Umbrella okay, so is probably a better word, but let's go with underwear, sure. <laughs> we have two questions. There's two questions that have come through, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address them. And if you all have anything to add, I think that would be fantastic to just feel free to dive on in. Um, I have one that says, if amenities are part of the vision of what drives sense of community, why aren't amenities on the list and what is happening maybe on a deeper level that drives sense of community. So um, amenities, let me just start first. We do have amenities as a potential driver. So as we're doing the analysis, that could potentially move up to the top five if someone found that that brought, or enough residents found that that really elevated perception of value for them. What I'm getting in talking to the panelists is that they have used their amenities as a means of connection. So that courthouse that Samir 
uh, talked about, you know, having opportunities to connect. Uh, Linda had mentioned, you know, the clubhouse and uh, how you can see people kind of milling about. Um, you see that they're, you know, it's not just one person kind of sitting in there, like using the amenities as a, as a means for those connective points for your residents. Carol talked about, you know, having the coffee bar. And so when you're having amenity, when amenities are available that others can visually see people kind of milling about, they're here, they're there, they're kind of everywhere in and around the community. Collectively, that visual representation screams or speaks to, this is truly a community of residents. So I think that's how your amenities can be, um, can attribute to sense of community without, you know, actually having to be in the top five in terms of the drivers. So I hope that answers um, the question. Anyone else um, on the panel, do you all, um, other than what you've given the audience, is there any like amenity that you feel like is like the most um, used at your community or the one that you see residents kind of, you know, utilizing the most? I would say um, definitely the fitness room. Um, Cause here in Michigan, our pools only open about three months out of the year. Um, so definitely the fitness room and then our bonfire area. Um, and that creates, you know, a natural area for people to gather together. And the thing you gotta point out about the amenities is people can live in a, an apartment community for five or six years and maybe never use those amenities. And that's the whole idea is to get them to make use of those and enjoy them and make it part of their uh, lifestyle because the amenities are sometimes what sets everybody else apart. And if somebody doesn't find the value in getting up every day and going to the fitness room, um, and I like the idea of having the instructor there um, that Amir mentioned, because um, a lot of people are intimidated by the fitness room. They won't go down there because they're not sure they know how to use the equipment or they're embarrassed and don't want to be around other people. Ours is 24 hours and people come and go all day and all night. And it, it's become a true value for them. We update the equipment on a regular basis. We installed the mirror um, fitness um, piece a couple of years ago and residents love it. But you do have to create um, the environment to where they feel comfortable and they wanna be included in different fitness uh, events and activities. And, and once they are, they make friends, they develop you know, relationships and friendships with those people and it becomes very important to them. Absolutely. Um, Samir, I actually have a question that you might be able to answer. Um, it's about when there's new staff that comes in uh, to a community. For example, you were promoted, you left. So, you know, there might be new staff members that are coming in. How do you um, kind of keep a sense of community going or any suggestions for how to keep sense of community going when there's like new faces, you know, new um, employees that are on site? Sure. I mean, I actually can't take credit or we can't really, this is not a good tip. It just happens that <laughs> some of our, some of our uh, employees there had been there for years and years. I mean, we had a small community. There's a, there's a mid-rise of 500 units and uh, Paula, my senior leasing staff member when I was there, had been at that site for six years. Eric had been at that site for five years. So, you know, people are coming in, bringing their kids in, they're running in and hugging us. So, you know, pre-pandemic, we would have a resident event every month. And some of it was just like a breakfast grab and go. Some of it was, you know, a little, uh, a little luncheon, something like that. But a lot of times we would have these big dinner, like barbecue dinner where we'd have our staff stay uh, in, the, in the evening and then serve the food to, Residents, so you got to know the people. The people that want to know us, you know, met us. I think in this area, the you know, DC, Northern Virginia area, some people really want to connect with their, um, the, uh, the staff, and some people are just, you know, I'm working 80 hours a week. I just want to make sure the lights are on, the water's working, everything's clean, and I feel safe, you know. So we try to deal with both of those people that want to uh, get to know us better. We were open pretty much all the pandemic. And I think we were closed for a week at the very beginning. And then the doors were open and people come in and talk to us whenever they wanted to, you know, masks on, socially distance, et cetera. But 
that's the one thing we're there seven days a week and and present for the residents okay um carol or linda have you all had any new hires or new employees come on board any tips for how to kind of you know introduce them to existing residents so that they're you know they're just a little more familiar when people see them usually a meet and greet is helpful we'll you know usually announce when new people um to announce to the neighborhood when new people join whether it's maintenance or people in the office just so they're familiar with them they know them covid did put a little bit of a, a glitch in all of that but um, I think it's important, you know, to announce to the community um, that we do have, you know, new people on board and then to give them an opportunity and maybe have a time slot where you've got a cake or cupcakes and invite everyone, you know, to the clubhouse to meet this person or, um, you, you know, present an opportunity for them to familiarize themselves with them. Cool. Carol, anything on your end? Yeah, so that's, um, I, I just went through that with a full staff turnover, and that's precisely what we did. So we we always post anyways on social media with any um, new employees, their birthdays, their anniversary dates. So we really try to promote our staff and make sure that they're involved and know what's happening with them. And then, of course, we just had a resident event last night where we were able to introduce them, and there was a lot of interaction. And so I think that's you know, a good way as well to communicate and connect the new staff members to the residents. I love it. I love everything you guys just offered up in terms of sense of community. So quick recap, I'm, I'm getting like just really treating the atmosphere, the environment as a neighborhood, as Linda mentioned, starting that from before they're even a resident. Um, Carol was talking about multiple ways for residents to communicate with not only the management team, but each other. Um, when there's new people that are coming on board, you're making it a big deal to get the residents involved as well. And Samir, never underestimate the power of your amenities, <laughs> giving residents those opportunities to find ways to, to connect with each other. You know, you may have to get a little creative with your events. And then two, um, making sure that you are, you know, not just sort of like cookie cutter, you know, what you're doing, because you do have some residents that want those opportunities. And then you do have some that, to Samir's point, super busy, just want to make sure that their experience is just, you know, as trouble free as possible. Which kind of brings me to the number two driver, having that trouble free, no problems in your apartment home. Uh, we are back with the appearance of the apartment and the condition of the apartment being the number two driver. So, so far, everybody, we're two for two when you're comparing year over year. These have not dropped in terms of placement. Um, Carol, we will talk about you all because I think your EPIC report card, I mean, just phenomenal. Uh, but knowing that value is the number two driver, that comes down, or excuse me, the number two driver for value is the apartment. That really comes down to maintenance and how streamlined that service request process is. Um, so in terms of your work order survey, you guys had a 4.7 out of five. Um, for maintenance and I mean things are just going super well so when there is that hiccup you know it's not a one and done kind of situation you got to get a part a vendor something happens there's a delay how does your team keep your residents in the loop so that they are you know kind of kind of giving your teams a break or more understanding of why those delays are taking place sure yeah so you know, I really, again, I feel this really trickles down from the top. You know, from the time they move into their apartment, we ensure that they are completely satisfied with, with what they have there. And, um, you know, we always have a welcome bag that's in their apartment immediately when they walk in and we're, you know, promoting our apartments. And, you know, then we do a follow-up with them a couple days after they move in just to make sure that we keep that open line of communication. I know I talked about communication last time, but I think communication is just always key. 
Um, we, we, again, we maintain a convenient means of communication. So again, if that's by email, phone, text messaging, whatever is most convenient to them, we try to find that route. So, um, you know, with work orders and, you know, again, we just went through a, a new lease up. So, you know, we had a lot of issues with punch list items not being completed on time or appliances being on back order or whatever the case is. And, um, you know, that can be very frustrating for the resident experience. And it's very hard for us because we always maintain a very high scores with our customer service. So we were truly concerned uh, with how this would affect us. And in the end, we I just had to stay very on top of maintaining that open line of communication. So to let them know that, you know, it's out of our hands and, you know, what the situation is, if it is on back order or finding another resolution to the problem or maybe even just a temporary resolution. So I think in the end, it's just, again, about communicating with them. You're, you're putting their mind at ease. You're letting them know that you're aware of their situation, but that you're on top of it. And I think that 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 goes a long way. I've heard, you know, a lot of feedback from our residents where, you know, they truly appreciate how well we do communicate with them on all the different forms and platforms of our, um, you know, uh, social media and, you know, through our through our online portals and things. So I think that, you know, again, they could have scored us really poorly, but because I just maintained that communication with them, it, it really it really helped us. Um, kind of move forward with that, with that issue. Um, you know, and then, of course, just making sure that our maintenance staff are completely trained. And, you know, if they're, they're dealing with that resident directly, so, of course, we have to make sure that they're maintaining that professionalism, respectfulness, respecting their space. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer. And, you know, you, you treat them how you'd want to be treated. I think that's, um, that goes a long way as well. Yeah, Cheryl, I think um, you you said something that was super important that we're finding with especially our Satisfax work order survey. When you're keeping your residents in the loop, like you're telling them why there's a delay, what's going on, you tend to get better survey scores than if, you know, you don't tell them, you know, what's happening. And we see that across the board. So even if, you know, they're, is going to be a time where they're not able to just knock out a service request. Um, to Cheryl's point, having that communication as the buffer, I think your residents tend to be a lot more like understanding and lenient on on something like a survey when when there is that little buffer in there to soften, you know, the fact that they've had to wait longer than they probably would have liked, for sure. Um, okay, Linda, I'm going to throw this one over to you because as we saw with Cheryl's um, scores and her community, you all are at the exceptional level as well for your annual survey. So all of the questions related to maintenance on the annual survey, um, you all, I mean, amazing, you know, high exceptional level scores, making sure that, you know, you're teams are performing really well. So is there anything that you can share? Like, how do you manage that consistency? Because, you know, you have residents who have more than one service request over the course of the year. You know, how do you keep your teams performing at such a high level, you know, on a consistent basis? Well, I think that starts with the fact that um, I'm a little partial, but I do have the best maintenance team. <laughs> They, um, we make it a point to meet um, every Monday as, as an entire team so that we're all like in the loop on any turns and any specific service requests, any after hours service that came in over the weekend. And we all communicate very clearly on that. And then th the maintenance team themselves, they, you know, communicate very well amongst themselves. They make it a point to um, complete, you know, every every turn and every service request, and they treat the resident as if they were a family member, basically. Um, I've had the, um, I guess, the luxury of having a consistent maintenance team, and most of my residents, you know, know them by name, um, and they interact with them throughout the day. But the fact that they make it a point to provide 
you know, top-notch customer service every time. They respond to the work orders the same day they're called in and complete them, as I'm sure most people in the industry do now. Um, and they um, make it a point to, you know, interact with their their kids and their dogs while they're in the unit. Um, they're mindful of, of the surroundings. They, you know, make it a point to, to you know, always clean up um, after whatever repair they're making. And, um, you know, they're completing anywhere from 80 to 100 service requests a month on top of our turns and, you know, the ground. So they, they work really hard. They're dedicated. And um, they, you know, they enjoy their job. I think um, that says a lot. It's the way, you know, we treat them and, and respect them as maintenance guys. And, and we, they truly want to do their very best. Um, we also um, complete follow-up phone calls. The operating system that we use, Entrada, automatically sends a, a, an email to them when the service order has been closed out. So if they're not at home when we do it, it lets them know that it's closed out. It gives them an opportunity to leave their own survey on how they felt the work was completed. But we follow that up with a phone call um, every week and communicate with them directly. And I think they appreciate that. They enjoy the the actual phone call. I think um, COVID and then technology itself has caused us to um, rely on that. And residents don't, they're not used to always getting that personal phone call to say, hey, how was your service today? Um, is there anything else that you know needs attention that we can you know come in and take care of for you? And <clears throat> I think it's the approach and the attitude that our guys have that has helped us stay, you know, at the top in this particular category. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And the teams, I mean, obviously, we don't give you all these numbers. Your residents are giving you guys, for all of you, these numbers. So we're mm -hmm. just kind of the certifying medium, you know, over here to say, this is what your residents have to say. Um, so I love that we're seeing a lot of really good um, kind of kudos, you know, that's coming your way. And for Cheryl and Samir as well, coming your way directly from your residents. So it is time for one more poll. I wanna know um, again, which driver, it's gonna pop up right on your screen, do you think is number three right now? Um, community events, social media, or neighbors. It's one of these from 2021 that is a carryover and it is at number three for 2022. I got 30% voting. I want to get to at least the majority. Again, feel free to flip a coin. That's what I always do when I'm not sure. Or eeny, meeny, miny, mo in this case, since we have three. All right, we are at 51%. I'm gonna go ahead and close this poll out. So what we have, it's a tie actually. We have 40% saying community events, 21 social media and 40 are saying neighbors. Okay, so for 2022, the number three driver, if you answered social media, you are correct. Social media, we are 343 uh, this year, which now I've mentioned this in the very beginning means community events, and neighbors are no longer in the top five. This is one of the things you guys, to be honest with you, that blew me away when I saw that to the point where I had our analysts go back and recalculate everything just to make sure our minds weren't playing tricks on us. So social media, Samir, I'll throw this to you. Many of the residents at the Madison, they're pretty active on social. Um, they actually geotag the community on social media when they're posting. They post, I mean, everything, like notes to the UPS delivery person. Um, they post when they're doing like parties and well not parties but little get togethers in their home or just like here's the meal that I'm eating right now at the Madison at Boston station so do you think that social media that your residents have used social media as like a good way to just again going back to that sense of community to just kind of overall enhance sense of community by by uh their social feeds yeah 100 percent I mean I think we try to encourage it. I know we are, we have a great marketing team at our corporate office that oversees our social media and 
you have a presence on Instagram and on Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. But then I think between us pushing that on our end, ask, you know, taking pictures of some of these events, when the food truck shows up, taking pictures of that and posting it. And, you know, we do ask, of course, the residents if they're okay being in pictures. But, you know, all these little events we do. And then, again, the thing with Kobo also, some of these residents are taking pictures themselves. I think it sort of encourages, like, look, we're all sort of stuck here, but we're stuck together. And let's make the most of it. Like the one picture in the top left corner, I think was the, the doggy pool day. You know, it was kind of nice keeping people outside and wanting some connection again after being stuck in the last two years or so, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, Linda, you have some tips on social. I'm going to save those just till the end, just in case I can't get to, I want to make sure we can get to all of the, you know, the drivers. So hang in there. And when we have an open, you know, forum at the end, I'll ask you for your tips on kind of really good engagement for or content that creates engagement on social. <laughs> So knowing okay. that we have two new drivers, this is my final, final poll of the uh, session. Which two drivers, I'm gonna give you two of them, uh, or you can pick two out of this list. So on the list, I want you to pick two. Which two drivers do you think are back in the top five for 2022? So just pick two of them that are showing up on the list. Is it safety and security? Is it quality of maintenance, which we have not seen since 2013? Uh, the way the community looks, I think that dropped out in 2017. Uh, the office, that dropped off in 2014. And safety and security, I think, dropped out in 2015. Like, it's been a minute all of these drivers that we've seen any of them in the top five um we're talking at least five years for some of these drivers so which ones do you think are back in the game for 2022 all right i'm at 50 percent. i'm gonna get one more vote to push us over let's go ahead and close this out so where we are right now we have the office coming in at number one, maintenance number two, safety and security number three, and then the way the community looks uh, is number four. So the new drivers that we have for 2022, drum roll, uh, let me go ahead and show you guys. Let's see. Oh, sorry, my screen, I think it was doing something weird. There we go. Safety and security, it moved from number seven to number four. And the community appearance moved from number 13 to number five. Now remember, the things that are not in the top five, it's not because they aren't important, it's just kind of part of the job or it's a given for your, for your residents. So maintenance, it's still a given. The office, you guys do it a fantastic job being responsive and dependable. It's still considered a given for your residents. Where they now find value is in that kind of safety and security and the way that the community looks. What's a little scary for safety and security being in the top five is that, you know, this is something we can't guarantee. I mean, the topic itself is often sort of taboo in the industry. You know, you don't talk about safety, you don't talk about security for the residents, but it does not stop residents from saying, this is important to me. So you wanna look at it from the things that, from the pers uh, perspective of what is within the control of the management company, right? What can you manage? What can you control? Um, what are your responsibilities? You know, obviously crime, um, those kinds of things were, are outside of our control, but cameras, controlled access, screening your applicants if you get wind of an unauthorized at occupant you know you're handling those something as si as simple as landscaping you know not letting bushes become overgrown um i used to you know have one of my team members make sure all the models were locked uh, if it was a vacant you close all the blinds before the end of the day so no one can see that that's a vacant apartment so just think about the things that you can um, manage through because there 
there will be quite a bit that is beyond your control. So as long as your residents know that you have a good handle on your responsibilities, you know, that's, I think they're going to be um, good, you know, in terms of, of, you know, making sure that you all are kind of living up to your end of the bargain when it comes to safety and security. So knowing that community appearance and condition is a uh, top of mind for residents. Uh, Cheryl, what tips do you have for how to keep the communities in sort of tip top shape? Because your ground score for your Epic Index is near perfect. Any tips for our group? Yeah, so I mean, you know, we all we all know that it's absolutely crucial that we all get out and inspect our properties. Um, I am just a little more anal about inspecting, even not just morning time, but, you know, even before the end of the day, it's like, I just try to get out there to make sure that I know what's happening, whether it's just walking around or even driving in my car. Um, so I'll just constantly, I'm always watching. Um, I think that, you know, that's key, right? Just making sure that we're out and about. Um, also with the staff, so they know that if they see something wrong or if there's something that needs attention, um, we're immediately communicating, right? So taking a photo and sending it to the entire team, maintenance team. And so we jump right on those things immediately. Um, I think also, you know, just having a really good trustworthy landscaper is important. Um, you know, they need to be doing their job and that entails informing management when there's a need for some replacements of, um, you know, tr trees, shrubs, flowers, um, um, if there's any broken irrigation, um, having a good irrigation plan as well. So, you know, a, a monthly routine check of all of your irrigation, I think is also important. Um, but they should also be informing of any pest issues. And so, you know, your landscaper is of utmost important, um, as long as, as well as your staff, of course, your maintenance staff, um, to notify when anything needs to be updated or changed. Um, you know, outside of that, maintaining your, you know, your routine pressure washing, making sure the critical paths are always clean and clear of debris, and, you know, making sure the leasing signs are replaced and refreshed, you know, balloons and things like that. So, um, I know that that's probably all normal to everyone, but I think maybe seeing those items through and making sure that you're just staying on top of it, um, I, I think is important. And I, I, util, I utilize a lot of um, programs, but a lot of it, um, I use a program called Trello. So I try to keep things um, organized in there to where it reminds me, you know, of certain things that need to be done. Um, you know, organization is key. So I think that's pretty much it on my end. Yeah, I love I love all of that, and I love that you mentioned bringing the landscapers into you know um, just kind of making sure that that communication is there and holding them accountable too. You all, if you are doing any surveys, whether it's Satisfax or Survey Monkey, or you're doing you know one on your own, if you have those landscaper scores and you see that they're starting to drop bringing those landscapers kind of in like, hey, we want to show you what's happening. Our residents are noticing, you know, certain things are not as nice as they could be. And one of the reasons that we are seeing uh, the appearance and condition back into the top five is that you have residents over the last year or two who have been spending more time outside the community. So they're noticing more things and that's why those things have become more valuable to them. You know, um, that's why they find they have a renewed value in how the community looks because they're around it a lot more. So as I mentioned, I mean, it goes without saying our panel, true experts when it comes to the top five drivers for value. Um, Samir, um, being in one of the highest rent markets, the DC area, um, your perception of value score for 2021 was a 4.67 the national average 3.52 so no, we do have attendees on a call today that are in those really high rent markets i mean apartments can cost more than two mortgages in some in some cases so how what are some of the things like 
that would attribute, you know, that your perception or your resident's perception of value was so far above that national average, especially, I mean, considering you're in DC. I think I saw that early on a few years back, uh, you guys had you know, office staff responsiveness and dependability on the list and it fell off as something that's expected. But I really did think that our staff, you know, showed the value by saying, hey, look, we are here for you. We're not just someone that takes your check every month. We have questions. We can help you out with this or that or the other. There's responsiveness. I know for a lot of our work tickets, um, actually for every, almost everything, you know, with the, the surveys that go out afterwards, if we got anything less than a, you know, essentially a four or a three, we would look at it and reply back right away to the people to, to essentially let them know, look, you know, things do go wrong and things are all weird this last few years of the pandemic, but we're willing to talk to ev about everything, try to fix things as, as best as we can. You know, I think people, when, when, given explanations for the most part, you know, when, when you tell them, look, this washer part is going to take a few days because of supply chain issues, as long as you're, you're telling them that and giving them, you know, a little window as far as how you're going to deal with the issues they have. I think they appreciated that. Uh, you know, they, they said as much. I think they gave us, they gave us a lot of good feedback on those kinds of things. So there's that along with, you know, the things we've mentioned before about things like the food trucks and this and that, which those are little things, but I think the fact that people felt comfortable with us really mattered a lot, you know, because you're right in this area, everything's expensive. And so if you're paying, you know, $2,000 for one bedroom apartment, you want to know that someone is actually not just cashing your check, but actually trying to take care of you, making you feel like you live in a home as well. Yeah, I, I love everything you just said. And going to your point, when items are no longer in that top five, you know, it's again, residents will give that great score. But where that where it starts to break down perception of value is are when those items are not going well. So not only for your community or for the Bal Madison at Boston, because you're no longer there, but uh, you your community, that community was doing so well in the top five drivers and maintenance was going well. The office, you know, all the things that you said, you know, how you treated your residents, how you made sure things were taken care of in their home, it just elevated that <clears throat> perception of value. So that's why not only was your value score above the national average, it was so far above the national average because the givens, I call them the givens, the givens were going so well in addition to those drivers. So I think that's what you just gave our audience is textbook example of how to really maximize perception of value um, at the community. You want to be focusing on the, on the drivers, right? Making sure the drivers are going well, but the things that your residents are like, well, that's your job. You want to be extra good at your job. So it just pushes you even further above um, what, you know, a normal or what a typical per value uh, level would be. It just continues to add to that. So I, I really love how you pointed out, like you even incorporated back in the office and maintenance because it really did make a big difference in how far above perception of value was from, you know, the national average. So I, if there are any questions that are coming, I don't have any questions that we haven't addressed already, but if there's anything else, feel free. Um, so some key takeaways, Melissa and I are gonna be all over the country in the next couple of months. Uh, if you're in any of the areas, we would love to see you. Uh, we want you to focus on what renters value, those top five, but you don't wanna slack on the givens to Samir's point. You still wanna be doing well in all of the other areas. And I love this quote. I have never been able to find out where it originated from. If you guys can find that out for me, let me know. But it says price is only an issue in the absence of value. Like I mentioned, residents will talk themselves out of their own price objection if the value is there. They will kind of reason it away. Um, so one final goodbye, Cheryl, would you like to say goodbye to our group? Did we yeah, this was so great. 
Yeah, this was so great. Thank you so much for having me on. It was really wonderful to talk with everyone and hear the other tips with the other panelists as well. Thank you again. Absolutely. And Linda, one final farewell for you. Well, thank you uh, for having me. I enjoyed this very much and um, wish everybody a lovely afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you. And Samir. Thank you very much for having me as well. And thanks for the tips from Cheryl and Linda as well, too. We're going to use those. Thank you. Fantastic. So everyone, if you're still on the call, be on the lookout for our follow-up email. It is going to be coming soon. If you want to participate in our Starbucks gift card an hour after the webinar, so it, in an hour, take a look at our Facebook or Instagram. There's going to be a special post uh, that that is just for this webinar. And we want you to comment. You got to like the post. You got to comment with your best takeaway. My best takeaway, honestly, everybody had so much fantastic stuff, but I love neighborhood. I, I just love that. <laughs> that's going to make me start. I'm going to start using that. I That's next level. Uh, you have until 5 p.m. Pacific time to participate. Uh, we will choose a winner and you will get your Starbucks gift card delivered to your um, email. So again, Thank you so much, everyone. April, we are, Melissa is back, yay. And Melissa will be talking about building a culture of, of wellness on April 21st. We hope you can sign up for that one as well. In the follow-up email, you will have a link to register for the April session. So again, thank you everyone so much. It was, I had a great time. I'm glad I got a chance to come back. Uh, for this session and I will we'll be in touch shortly everyone take care goodbye